Brian Scott with you. Insight to the end times. I thank you for joining us today. We're looking at where we are on God's timetable as the end of the age approaches. And we've known or we've studied in the previous episodes of this podcast uh, where we are and uh, how close we are to the very end. Now, yesterday, <clears throat> as I was sharing with you, um, and the day before, um, actually two days ago, I men mentioned to you that we do not know the exact time of this starting. Uh, we do not know. Uh, we, were, aren't, we are not entitled to know, according to the scriptures. Only Father God knows. And we pointed out some verses to you, for you in Mark, in Matthew 24, as well as in Acts chapter 1, verses 6 and 7, that only God knows the timing of this. Why that's so important is because once we get there and we have what is known as the pre-tribulation rapture of the church, then the last seven years on this earth, referred to in the book of Daniel chapter 9, can take place. There, these seven years are known as the years of tribulation, when God's wrath will be poured out on the earth. And that's followed by Jesus Christ coming back to the earth on the last day of the tribulation to the battle of Armageddon. When the Antichrist, his forces, and all the other forces that have gathered with him are defeated in the Valley of Megiddo in Israel. And then Jesus Christ will be able to ascend to the throne and he will rule and reign in total peace for a thousand year period called the millennial reign of Christ. Why we're so excited about this is because we're close. And we, why do we know we're close? Well, None of these prophetic events could really occur until Israel was reborn as a nation. And that occurred 75 years ago on May 14, 1948. We're calling the uh, reemergence of Israel as a nation the superstar of all prophetic end time signs. Amen. Now, the people of Israel, the Jewish people scattered around the world, have been returning to Israel in great numbers, thousands and thousands and thousands of them. And even more so during the last month uh, in October when the war broke out between Hamas and Israel. is uh, Jewish people from around the world, from Canada, from the United States, and, and other nations of the world have been going back to Israel to help defend the land. It is, uh, it's amazing. It's powerful. It's prophetic. It's fulfilling these end time scriptures. Today, I want to share a little bit about how Israel has reemerged as a global leader. Because in the mid 19, eight, in the mid 1800s, the land was so desolate that nothing would grow. It not only was desert like and uh, swamp like, malaria infested, it was ugly, desolate, deserted, desert like land. By, by, the turn of the ninth, by the turn of the 20th century, in the, in the last few years of 1800s, 1897, 1903, in that six-year span, something began to change. People started to come back. And they came back, um, and they started to repopulate the land. They were offered land there, and um, uh, if they would return, historical records indicate that at least 10,000 Jewish people returned as settlers, and they purchased and were granted uh, land deeds for up to 90,000 acres of land, desert land, deserted land, ugly land. Nothing would grow. But through hard work and the hand of God, they turned this desert land and swamp-like land into an oasis. Um, unbelievable productivity coming from these lands. Now, <clears throat> Let me give you some idea of this. The nation of Israel is now one of the greatest producers of agricultural foods of any nation in the world. They, everything is abundant. Abundance overflowing. Amen. Uh, in the year 2021... Israel was ranked as the 11th most powerful nation in the entire world in 2021. That's just barely over 70 years of existence. 
They went from a deserted, desert-like, non-productive land to a land and a country that is considered to be the 11th most powerful nation in the world. That's interesting because of the 10 nations ahead of them, nine of those 10, the first nine nations have land masses and populations that far, far, far exceed Israel. And <clears throat> Israel's land mass, the, the t land itself, only comprises something about 8,500 square miles. 99 other countries in the world are larger than Israel. So how do you go from a completely desolate land to the 11th most powerful nation in the world when you're working on a landmass that's only 8,500 square miles. I live in southern Ontario, just north of uh, the Great Lake, uh, Lake Erie. And we could put Israel on the north shore of Lake Erie, and it wouldn't, it wouldn't extend from one end of the lake to the other. That's how small Israel is. And it's amazing what they've done in such a short period of time. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to share more about this tomorrow with you because it just amazes me what God has done and what the people have done. Because the hand of the Lord is on their side and is behind them in everything they do. Praise God. Amen. Let me give you some more statistics. I hope these don't bore you, but I find them just staggering. You're wonderful. Israel has a military score determined by the U.S. News and World Report. They rank at a, with a score of 97.6. That may not mean anything to you, but that puts them in the top four in the entire world. Do you know how small Israel is? Do you know how small their population is compared to Russia and the United States? and China, who are the other three nations at the top of the list. Now, Israel ranks with a 97.6. Russia ranks at 100. So they're just a fraction behind Russia. China ranks at 97. That's slightly below Israel. The United States ranks at 96.7. That's almost a full point below Israel. So on this scale of military might and power and efficiency, Israel ranks second in the entire world, and it ranks in the top four major, major, major countries of the world. They're the fourth country. They're a, a, they're a speck compared to the United States or Russia or China. Unbelievable. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's talk about the economy for just a moment. They rank second in the world for new startup companies occurring. Second in the entire world. Wow. So these prophetic events that we've been talking about for the last year and a half, all the scriptures we've been covering, all the scriptures that point to the end, all the scriptures that point to the things that must occur and will occur and so on could not occur until Israel existed. They came into existence in 1948. We're 75 years into their existence. Israel was unbelievable, really unbelievable. I'll give you another figure here. Um, at the turn of the century in 1900, Jerusalem was a city of 28,000 people. Just 28,000 people. 48 years later, they were deemed to be a new nation. And at that time, <clears throat> their population was 800,000, not quite a million people. We're in the last days, and we're about to see some supernatural things occur. It is getting to be so exciting. I trust you are ready. I'll see you tomorrow. Amen.